I don't. E- I know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't want to acknowledge it. You're playing Apex. I can't believe you even said it. Not only am I playing Apex, it's Apex Mobile. Oh, really? You had to specify mobile. It came out on the phone. Sick. Because I thought you were holding a controller and playing Apex <laughs> on a computer screen I couldn't see. For those who don't know, it just came out. And of course, I downloaded it right This away. is not a sponsored podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> if Apex sponsored us, that would be epic. E- I think it's EA Sports. Why on earth would they sponsor us? Well, because I'm obviously endorsing their products. Yeah. And I'm a, a high-level contender in the game. Like a, like a level five Grand Wizard or something? <laughs> to tell, have you, dude, to tell you, have you ever played any shooting games on a dang phone? Uh, no, but... I am terrible at it. Like, I feel like I need a controller or something because it's, they tried changing things around from the, from like... Well, have you seen like uh, handles that go on your phone with buttons? Dude, and don't people three print some of these too now? Or yeah. No? Um, you could, pr- you could three D print a handle for your phone, definitely. But I'm talking about it like plugs into your phone. It has actual buttons that interact with the game. Hmm. Um, I I don't know. D- is it cross platform? Are you playing against PC players? No. Good. Um. I mean, it is a cross-platform game, but mobile is just with mobile people. Um, and I know, like, I think, like, if you play, like, Nintendo Switch, I think you only play with Nintendo Switch people. But then when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and computer, those will mingle together. They try to keep Xbox with Xbox and play some with PlayStation, but sometimes there's, there's like, lobbies with, with both. With both. I don't know. Um, I know that on a mobile mo- mobile shooting game, there's usually a bunch of like aim assist and maybe directional stuff. So what happens is someone will play the mobile game version and they'll have one of those controllers or like other hardware that really helps them out. Right. And then they just rise to the top. Now what's fucked up is that there are, I think, I can't remember which games, but there are some shooter games that have mobile uh, cross-platform with PC. And wow. the mobile players who have those hardware upgrades, I mean, the game's on easy mode for them. Wow. Because the PC players have to worry about so much other stuff. Huh. I'm, I'm, the only other game I've played on the phone is Pokemon Go. For real. Like, I'm so novice in this. You never but... play Angry Birds? No. Really? Never got into Angry Birds. I used to play a game called Temple Run. No words, words with friends. Temple Run? I've heard of that. It's uh, you're you look like some Indiana Jones adventurer guy, and you're yeah. you're running through a temple. <laughs> you have to hop sometimes. <laughs> you have to slide some other times. Nice. You're grabbing coins like oh. Sonic. Okay. Pretty sick. I don't know. That's the a uh, guy. The second I got a smartphone, I downloaded Pokemon Go and never downloaded anything else until last week. That's right. You refused to get a smartphone for a really long time. I was one of these. You you kept calling it a fad. No, I didn't say it was a fad. (laughs) Oh, those smartphones will pass. Those will come and go. You guys will all be running back to the flips. I I was just so like, you know, I'm only paying... I don't even know what I was paying at the time, like 20 bucks a month for a dumb phone that, you know, just does phone calls or something. And to get the upgrade, it was, I don't know, now I have to pay 50 or 100 plus dollars a month. I don't remember what what it was at the time. But I was just like, oh, I'm never going to do that. Like, it's just not worth it to me, like financially, you know, until. And actually, Pokemon Go had come out two or three months already. And I still, you know, I was, you know, a Pokemon fan. I was like, eh, no. But it wasn't until I went to California for IBJJF Worlds Jiu-Jitsu Blue Belt. Didn't Pokemon Go come out in, like, 2016? 
Yeah, it came out uh, a couple of years ago. You held out until 2016, to maybe 2017, to get a smartphone? If you look up when Pokemon Go came out, I got a smartphone like three months after that. Wow. Yeah, so it was... W- Definitely, smartphones were already in everybody's, pretty much everybody's hand. I was like one of the last people. And like I said, I was in California and with going to this tournament, but then I stayed there for a couple of days because my girlfriend had an aunt and uncle that had a house there with a little guest house that we could stay in. And they let me use their like bicycle to ride around town. And they're, I can't think of exactly where they're at. It's a very popular area. Uh, but anyways, I'm on, uh, Tess stayed home, so I just went on my bicycle and you know went to this like farmers market and stuff, and then I wanted to go to the tournament to watch the venue because it was like the higher belts now is competing. But I thought I because they live right next to this venue, so I was like oh, I'll just be able to find it no problem. But once I got into the <laughs> farmers market, I had no idea where I was anymore. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you got lost? Well, kind of. I mean, I, I, I think I could remember how to get back to where I, to their house, maybe. But And then I, I, maybe I just forgot how what they told me, how to get to the venue or something like that. And I was all pissed off. Like, Anyways, it turned into a whole thing of me like asking people. like, Because the venue is literally the pyramid. If, if you know where the pyramid is in California, they, there's like this giant pyramid that they have like uh events and things in i had never seen the pyramid uh yeah i, I can't remember if it's in long beach or what part of california <laughs> there's it's one in, person from california listening just shouting right now i know they're like i know and and <laughs> tess's cousins live right i mean a couple of miles from this thing and literally like if you if i would have walked down the right block you could see it but i went the wrong direction right away obviously but it frustrated me enough asking random people where this place was and not figuring it out to where I was like, all right, I guess I gotta get a smartphone because you have a dang GPS wherever you go. And that was enough to pay for the extra, you know, yeah, monthly fee. Yeah, 100%. That totally sells it. And then I got one, downloaded Pokemon Go, and did nothing but Pokemon Go for like a year. <laughs> I don't even think I called or texted anybody. It was just like, Why would go you? away. <laughs> I don't call or text anybody. <laughs> yeah. I get one text a week, and it's Dalton saying, I'm here. Yep. <laughs> uh, Dude, there, have you seen the new Winnie the Pooh movie? It's coming out? The scary one? Yeah. I haven't seen the preview before, but I, I saw like a, like a picture of somebody saying there's a horror one coming out. No, I haven't seen the trailer. Scary? Uh, I have not seen the trailer. I don't think a trailer has dropped yet. But some pictures have dropped and an interview with the director has oh, come out. Oh, okay. Um, the, About time. The book for Winnie the Pooh, the original book from like 1926. Sure. That entered public domain. But, uh-huh. So you can retell that story copyright free, I guess. Okay. As long as you make it a little transformative. But the char- a lot of the characters Disney owns. Oh, like, they I changed think up they the probably characters. own like Eeyore and Tigger and Rabbit, like maybe some that get introduced later. Sure. I think this movie just has Pooh and Piglet. Oh. But the story is Christopher Robin went to college and stopped coming to Poohville or wherever the hell they live. And uh, Piglet and Pooh had to kind of fend for themselves and they, they became feral. And uh, they escape, and it's like a B horror slasher film. It's not anything high budget, but they escape and you know it's, it's a very kill inter- hot chicks. It's a very interesting premise. This whole like this kid had this whole world when he was younger, but then he grows out of it. You know, <laughs> you could do a lot with that, man. I, I like. It sucks that Disney probably does own half of it or some shit. Yeah. You know, but that's awesome. I can't wait to see it, man. Disney's kind of fucky with public domain, too. Have you ever heard anything about that? I believe it. They, I believe it. They got their start. They became so big by using characters that were in public domain, like Cinderella, Snow White, all these old stories. True. And uh, I think during that time, 
public domain was only meant to, or sorry, um, personal IP copyright was only meant to last as long as someone was alive so that they can make all their money off it. Right. And then once they're dead, you know, maybe they've made enough for their family. And well, Disney, as soon as Disney got powerful and started like creating their own characters and stuff, they lobbied to have IP pushed to like a hundred years or some shit. Oh, I even heard from someone that, um, well, now that corporations are considered people, it you could still use like, oh, it's the lifetime of this person called Disney, right? <laughs> this corporation, so they could like just never lose these IPs. That's wild. Well, hopefully, something like. Uh... NFTs brings the power back to the people again a little bit. I like I like the idea. Are you an NFT guy now? <laughs> um, Everything crashed, well, and now you're like, it's time to buy. <laughs> the the I'm I'm it's it's how you use the F- NFT, right? The the weirdness about anybody can produce an art piece, and it's just subject to whatever price somebody might want it for. What I what I think is interesting though is like right now if I was to take somebody's music, this big old rec- record company is going to come down on me with copyright infringement. But and oh, so hopefully a, a a music file of an like a, apparently an NFT music file, you could take that music and reproduce it however you want and put it towards your stuff, and you could make money on it and. If you do make money on it, it's going to go a little bit of that's going to end up going back to the original person who made that song, but you can f- kind of freely use it. Is that? Um, I have not heard anything about that. I mean, about I know music, about the music side of this. Well, I have heard like, for, I mean, I don't care a lot about music, right. but I have heard like people releasing tracks and onto the blockchain like they're selling that as, as an their NFT. nft and then i've also seen uh computer generated music that people are doing the same thing with hmm. but yeah i don't know how you 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 take it and then you make it its own thing and then i don't know how money goes back to the artist from there i'm not 100 percent sure on it. i was watching snoop dogg talk about it oh boy and I don't know. I'm sure he was really concise. I know he's really cohesive. in depth in the <laughs> NFT world. I'm sure, uh, but he, you know, he it sounded like he's making good points about how the record companies basically own his old music, and he hardly makes any money off of it. Where now he could have, hopefully, complete ownership of it, and then you guys could use it. And if you make some money, great. And some I don't know how it gets kicked back to him exactly, but I don't know. It's on the blockchain. How does that work, man? Blockchain? Yeah, I don't think anyone actually knows, but they're all hyped about it. <laughs> it's on the blockchain, dude. <laughs> My dad asks me questions all the time. Like, how does it work? I don't. And I'm just like, it's the blockchain. It's man. it just think of it as like um, a ledger, right? It's, I know. I am. I think that's the easiest way to describe it to people. Instead of having bank workers, your computer just does the work. Yeah, it's verified by a bunch of independent sources, so nothing could be messed up. Whereas a bank worker could put in an extra zero or forget a zero. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of new tech, have you seen uh, this sling launcher? They are sending uh, things into orbit without using any gas. Okay, I'm going to get the exact name of it. But Sling launch? Spin launch is what it's called. Okay. And it's, uh, picture like a disc on its side. And inside that disc is an arm that holds the rocket. Okay. And then they, va- they put that um, disc under vacuum pressure so there's no air resistance. And that arm starts to spin the rocket. And it spins at over 5,000 miles per hour. And then there's a little chute that comes off the disc. And at a precise moment, that chute opens up. The arm lets go of the rocket. And it comes out of there at 5,000 miles per hour, immediately just breaks a sound barrier, and launches into orbit Hmm. without using any gas. 
You couldn't put a what person on this. Size of a rocket. Yeah, I was about to say. Like you couldn't that. put a person on this. Okay. Uh, the rocket is pretty big. I mean, it, it's enough to launch satellites into orbit. It's hmm. it's a decent sized rocket. But no human could survive. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> put the, being put in that centrifuge or whatever the hell it's called and the, spinning at five thousand miles per hour would crush them. That would that would be your uh, theory about why can spacemen. <laughs> When you did not understand inertia the other day, <laughs> that would make their eyes pop out or something. What was it? Two times the speed of sound they were going or something like that. Uh, but I kept saying speed, many times the speed of sound. I, I kept saying the speed of light or something yeah. like that. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> They're going past the speed of light, man. <laughs> I thought that thing was really cool. They um. They they ha- they have a bunch of videos out. One of them is like no gas a three D wow. diagram. It shows you exactly how what everything company's works. doing this. Spin launch. It's oh, one that's word. the company. Yeah. Spin launch. Are they on the market? Are you gonna buy them? Wanna, you, just because you have a couple shares of Tesla doesn't mean you. can... I want to be a partial owner of this company <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm just imagining uh, like. Military is probably going to buy this thing. Imagine spin launching a. I mean, it's like a, it's kind of like old ass like Catapults? siege weapons. Yeah, <laughs> they're just spinning right. something and throwing it. Uh, well, and the, good good for the army for going green there. Another video was like they had attached a camera to the rocket, so you could actually see this thing mm. from the rocket's perspective, which. I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to see what that. What do you see? You just see the launch pad getting smaller. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's funny. No, you start to see aliens and shit. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it just, as soon as you get out of orbit, it's just all aliens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Did You seem like uh, the type of person to have maybe been a little bit convinced when the flat earther stuff was around oh boy no way i'm i'm way more i'm way more an alien guy than a flat earth guy really I'm way more on that well i think the flat earthers believe that aliens control it or I, god or I, something i don't know what they believe in man i don't know what they're smoking over there in the flat earth conventions i had someone really try to convince me one day and essentially, this is what they believe. They believe the Earth is a flat disk. There's a mountain of... There's mountains that go all the way around it that I guess are too tall for any human to climb over. And then there's a glass dome that goes over mm. all of that. And I couldn't follow after that. Biodome. So I kept asking the dude, like, okay, but who built the dome? <laughs> That's who, quite the structure. Who built that dome? Are you saying that there is a creator? Like, are you... What religion is this? Is, is this the Egyptians? The ancient Egyptians <laughs> got done with pyramids, and they're like, we're going to build a dome over everything. That'd be kind of sick. We found out how big this earth is, and now we're just going to be like, we're going to seal everything off. Did you know that there are, like, Egyptian-like tombs in the Grand Canyon? No. I'm going to blow your mind. No, no, what? I mean, I've, I've heard this conspiracy theory, but I can confirm to you that this is not true. Conspiracy? You can look it up online. The, the You can look a lot of things up online. The, you can look Flat Earth up like online. Like, Wikipedia, like... Why? Okay, we're going to make a video now looking up some alien... Uh, definitely <laughs> some alien encounters from people and maybe some government files i gotta tell you i don't believe anyone's ever encountered an alien i don't believe anyone's ever been abducted and i i I know that there aren't ancient egyptians buried in the grand canyon despite the fact that some canyons are named after places i don't know you can't call them egyptians because they're not from egypt i just it's so curious about ancient civilizations and Oh, you don't think that they were from Egypt? I'm just saying... Because the conspiracy theory is that they were. And I'm, that there is temples in the Grand Canyon. Th- no, that's what I'm saying. They have pictures of actual physical 
statues that are in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> no, they don't. You can you can look it up and you can show me what you th- believe to be yeah, statues in the Grand Legends. Canyon. But I'm telling you right now, it it is not a true story. I hope I saved it. I hope you did too. <laughs> I hope that it's from like the onion.org or some shit. <laughs> So, for those who don't know, I'll, I'll kind of give you the rundown. The idea that Dalton's trying to present is there were ancient Egyptian tombs in the Grand Canyon in the United States. Like, they had made it over here, and they had chose to live in the Grand Canyon, which, of all the cool places to live in the U.S., you get nothing out of that. You don't get access to food. You get access to water, but that's kind of it. And the conspiracy theory goes that back in like the 1920s or some shit, the Smithsonian found this. It challenged the belief of manifest destiny and God. And they loaded up all the artifacts, took them out into the ocean, dumped them. Additionally, they sealed off the chambers and... um, It's now in a restricted area. Nobody can go there because they don't want the proof that Egyptians were in the Grand Canyon to get out because that would shatter some other conspiracy that they've built up. And uh, have you found your evidence? I just have one picture here, but I don't like the website it's with. I'm trying to find a more... Yeah. I'm just on pictures right now. The Cheops Pyramid is a 5,000 foot elevation pyramid in the Grand Canyon. And it's southwest of a Buddha temple. Sounds sick. And an Isis temple? And an Isis temple. (laughs) This is getting really deep in the conspiracies now, man. Maybe Isis the Egyptian god, right? We're getting a little crazy here. I think you're thinking of a different guys, ISIS. Just Google Egyptian tombs in the Grand Canyon and see what happens there. <laughs> You'll go down a weird rabbit hole. I used to work with this Mormon guy who was super deep into these types of conspiracies. He's the one that told me about this. A Mormon. And uh, the National Geographic, he called it the National Pornographic. Like it was some great burn. And he's like, everything they tell you is a lie. Everything in those museums is meant to deceive you. Wow. And he he went on for a really long time about the pyramids in the Grand Canyon. And that's how I learned about it. And everything I told you is just recited from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He was a nut job. You know what sucks, too, is we're going to have to, like, eventually we're going to have to have a laptop here at and the image is going to, you can post it up onto. Yeah. Well, maybe one day. Maybe one day when we have an actual studio and like a person working for us. Yeah. But, you know, until then, we have 200 subscribers. <laughs> and this only costs money and time every it's, week. It's definitely been a slow grind, man. I thought it'd be a little quicker than this. But at the same time, we've kind of just been. I almost wonder if we should really concentrate really hard on a bigger video instead of, you know, just getting something right. out every week, you know? Good idea. Also, a good idea would be if we actually used any of our other social media accounts. Yeah, we got to like get going Twitter, on TikTok, too. things like that. I mean, we're just throwing videos out into the void. True. True, true, true. That's the game nowadays, man. You got to fucking just flood and just keep putting your name out there on everything until yeah. somebody hears somebody about cares. you. Somebody cares, yeah. yeah. And hopefully they, they share it. Oh, man. It's kind of interesting, though, that some people can just, uh, like this YouTuber that I'm super into, Nerd City, he, oh, he only has a, a dozen videos or something like that on his channel. And it was like immediately, a couple of videos in, he started just getting views and views and views and views. Nice. His videos are insanely produced, though. Interesting. I'll, you'll have to show them to me, man. Because that's Mr. B's whole thing, man. 
you, why would you make a bunch of little videos when you could just put everything into one good one? Yeah, except for the fact that now that Mr. Beast has this audience, he doesn't do this on his main channel, but he has a, a hundred sub channels where he does just put out garbage. He he can reproduce his content fourteen different ways now. Well, like his to, Mr. Beast reacts. You ever watch a video on there yet? Uh, it is the uh, lowest tier reaction content actually i have showed you a video of them okay yeah yeah and we yeah. kind of made fun of it a little bit love mr beast but uh i mean he knows what he's doing with that channel he, well, he's getting he's putting a lot of videos out and he's getting a lot of views. that's the thing it's like he knows exactly where his what audience he's trying to get after with that video with that channel yeah he's not trying to get you the older 30 year old guy he's trying to get the, the kid eighth grader who's right. just you know, last of the dumbest, stupid shit, and they have a <laughs> YouTube account. I don't know. He's a. Uh, it's it, there's a million YouTubers we 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 follow and we we study it, and it's just what is the correct way? I don't know. The other thing is, is that there are uh, entire channels dedicated to teaching you how to use YouTube, and you can follow their shit precisely. And I'm I'm constantly experimenting. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna take this guy's advice and use it on this video specifically, and vice versa. And uh, honestly, nobody knows what they're talking about. And those guys' channels are successful so because many. nobody knows what they're talking about. And there are so many people who are like, how do I make this fucking work? Yeah. So their channels get really boosted. But then again, I also like PewDiePie. He did the two videos a day until you fucking heard about him. Like, who's this guy putting two, two out a day? And I don't... I know now they're pretty well produced, but... They I are not. I watch PewDie I've been watching PewDiePie. Um, I guess I, they are pretty ba pretty basic in the. Yeah, I haven't missed a video of him in a long time. But the other thing is, is that he did one video a day for ten years. Oh, okay. And uh, after that, he said, you know, I like monetarily, he doesn't need to put any more out. So he considers himself retired at this point. Yeah. And now he no longer puts out a video every day. He just he just moved to Japan. Um, wow. So he was really spotty with the videos because he had to move to Japan. And now he's doing like a video a week maybe, every other day maybe. Sure. If he's like really pumping them out. I'm so and they're still just like reacting to a subreddit or reacting to what the video he put out yesterday was – reacting to a subreddit and just making fun of like morbius and shit like that my uh one of my favorite youtubers uh that play that youtube's apex legends he's from australia the dude's hilarious never shows his face either which what's is his name zilbrad zil you said that okay uh i does i i get such a crack out of his videos but um apex legends has a new season every two months or something like that yeah and the last two seasons at least he'll just like put a few videos out at the beginning of the season just to try it out and then he'll just nothing and i'm just he used to put a bunch out and he has this huge audience now right and uh you know i think he, he might be in doing fucking college or classes or some other shit in his life too like i'm like i'm, I'm like a you know the assholes like when are you gonna put more shit out man you know like, we need <laughs> also content. i mean you 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 reach this critical mass where there are people who you get a few million subs and now those people are going back to watch your old video. So it's this, it probably becomes a self-sustaining thing where it's like, I don't have to put a video out this week. Like I could just f fuck off and go on this trip. I think that's where he's at, man. Cause is he on the misfits crew or anything? Do you know about that? I don't think so. I don't even know if he really plays in the highest competitive leagues or anything no. like that either. Misfits is like this this uh, team, like this stream team, YouTube team in Australia. So I thought oh. maybe. I don't know. I'll have to look him up. But I think he's just, he's very good at the game, like for sure. And, and uh, he's just, he has like these little funny little sayings that he tries to get in in every game. Almost always, he's like the champ. You, know, you probably haven't played Apex Legends, but uh, they'll have a champion squad, and they'll show it in the front. Like whoever 
like won the last game and had the highest like kills and stuff and every time he's like and we are the champions and and uh or i am your champion and like before it comes up and then sometimes it doesn't come up and somebody else and like oh there's some predators in this lobby and they'll freak out or something like that and (laughs) And they, I don't know, he's got a, a couple of really funny, and, the, and he's Australian too, so then they got that Australian uh So like literally so everything funny. they say I is know, funny, it's just It's unfair. It's so I, fun. I, I don't know. The Australian accent I love is that really accent. good, yeah. Max Mofo, good example of it. He's one of the few, though, that I've seen that doesn't show his face and is very successful. And not for being very, very good at the game. He, he's very good, but... What I'm, you know, the other guys that don't show their face are are usually like the craziest top tier players that don't don't give a shit about showing their face, you know. Right. But this guy's personality is so funny. But I guess he just, I don't know, maybe he doesn't have the, doesn't have the confidence or something. I don't know. You know, I wish that I played this game so that I could talk with you more about Apex Legends. The thing is, though, is that you talk about it enough for the both of us i will never play it it's all right i'm not it's it's i think it's coined the toughest battle royale in video games so if is that I, what you I think see if you would be scared of it you think it's a it's the most challenging battle royale I, i'm don't i'm just saying the highest uh tough the <laughs> highest level of gamers out there they, they play think, apex legends right well they they say that it's the toughest battle royale of course they would <laughs> Of course, the people playing it are saying it's the most challenging, so that they're the best. I, I, what, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I think the ch- most challenging game is Minecraft. Minecraft. I don't even know what that is. Shut up. <laughs> is that the one where you make blocks and stuff? Yeah, that's all you actually do. It's like Legos. What do you mean? You've never played Minecraft. Don't call. Don't compare it to Legos. It's like a giant Lego world. It is actually like a giant Lego world. I can. That's a fair comparison, sure. I don't even know what we're. What we're now you know how I feel. Anymore. Exactly. Now we're talking about apples and oranges. Now you know how I, you can compare apples and oranges. One has a peel that you shouldn't eat. One you can bite right into. One is but a why citrus are, fruit. But why are we comparing apples and oranges? Is Thank the problem. you. Exactly. You're the one that brought in oranges. I I want I'm trying to pin this I on want you. apples. <laughs> uh, I'm I am a little addicted to Apex Legends. I will. Oh, admit, they uh, admit they to never it. knew that. <laughs> they couldn't so, guess. I got a good story for you. Uh, I I I meant to tell us a couple of weeks ago. I think that um, I'm playing and playing Apex Legends, and my girlfriend takes the dog outside and she accidentally locks her she leaves the keys in and locks herself out and but she has her phone so i'm playing and she calls me and she and i'm like hello <laughs> you know because i thought she was home hey i locked myself out can you come get me oh yeah no problem you know give me a sec and uh, i hang up the phone and we're in the middle of a game so I dude, keep... you don't live in a mansion. You can run up and unlock your door. I, I, that's what I should have done. I should have ran downstairs, unlocked it, and ran back up and just been AFK for five seconds. Yeah. But here's the problem. I was a little baked. Uh, uh, <laughs> another shocker. <laughs> He's addicted to Apex Legend and I, he smokes weed. And. I almost like inst. I mean, I something happened in the game and they got me back in, and I basically instantly forgot that I needed to open the door now. Oh my so god! I keep, <laughs> I keep, <laughs> I keep playing the game, man. These Apex, these these games could go twenty plus minutes for a battle royale. You know what I mean? All and when you're through. high, that could feel like an hour. And and you could actually forget and go into another game. That's not what happened. <laughs> That's not what happened. I don't think so, but here's what oh did happen. Oh, my God. I'm in it, and, like, at this point now, I'm, so, I'm so, we're so far in the game. Like, we're in the finals. I am, I am, like, focused on the game, and, like, I'm hearing noises, like, tink. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But then I'm back in it, and, like, scared me at first, you know, and, uh, I think I hear like another like, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? 
and I'm just oblivious right now. And finally the game gets over and I see that the buzzing was my phone going off. I was like, oh, and I pick it up. And I, it's Tess, of course, with like three missed calls. And she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I answer, she, what are you doing? I'm like, uh. And I go down and Did I- Did you realize it as soon as you saw? Turns out the, the dinging, she was throwing rocks at the right. window. <laughs> she knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> Dude. I completely just hung up the phone and got right back into the game and was gone. Do you ever wonder why she sticks around? <laughs> <laughs> that's an insane thing to do she was a little angry oh really <laughs> i might shocked. have been in the doghouse yeah how'd you get out of the doghouse i felt bad about that one i don't know it's her oh, birthday to, today i made her a cake did this happen today <laughs> <laughs> no it happened a couple weeks ago i i made up for it i don't know i had to give her a massage or something, make uh, her some food. Okay. Be selfless. It was it was one of those days where that was randomly cold and rainy. <laughs> <laughs> She's outside freezing to death. She had no clothes on either. It was bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's outside. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. That's, I mean, uh, uh, she was so mad. <laughs> Yeah, no, and she has every right to be. That's she. She threw a couple rocks, and I heard them, and I had no idea what the fuck it was, man. I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm looking around too. I'm like, "What the fuck is going?" On? She's throwing pebbles. All of a sudden, a brick comes through the window. Get off a <laughs> written on it. Get off apex, you fucking asshole. I almost. I almost need, I almost blame her a little bit because the rocks threw me off. I was almost thinking we got ghosts or something. Now I'm like, what the f- what is going on right now? The house is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it sounds like it's right next to me, and I've never heard this I, noise. I have before. to point this out whenever you do it, but it feels like you're doing the just pass and blame a little bit here. <laughs> this is 100% your fault. <laughs> I would never pass the blame. I don't know why you would ever accuse me of such a thing. I take accountability for all my actions. Do you think you actions. play Apex Legends better when you're high or worse? Your hmm. reaction time's got to go down a bit. I don't know, but maybe your focus gets better. Because uh, like, I, like I was just like zoned in. Yeah, it was. your focus was so locked on that you forgot your girlfriend had... You were just hung up on her. <laughs> so you're just she saying. needed something from you. I almost some. I almost, sometimes I wonder about because like I think I have some ADD, okay, and I almost wonder if the weed helps it, and it focuses me in where normally if I didn't, I would just be doing a million things at once. I uh, know. we could do an experiment. We could. Now, but you no. could just not smoke weed for like a week <laughs> okay. and, and, and de- like write down all your scores for that week, your KD ratio, how many games you won, <laughs> all apex stats, all apex stats. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do a week where you just, you smoke so much, you forget you have a girlfriend and you write down all those stats. <laughs> the problem is you probably forget to write down the stats on that week. <laughs> So I don't know how you keep track of this. You need this like an tough. outside observer. This is tough, yeah. I don't know. We're going to have to figure that experiment out. We're not really scientists. I'm not a scientist, no. Right now, I'm trying to make sure that we're not a cooking channel either. I'm trying to we have, I'm trying to space out our, our cooking. You know what's funny? A long time ago... I was, before I even put out a single YouTube video or like had a camera, I was thinking about channels that would be cool. Yeah. One of them was a cooking channel. And it was. Not against it, really. It was called. uh, Oh, this was years ago. Do you cook a lot? Um, I don't. I cook. I don't cook a lot. Kelsey does probably most of the cooking, but Mm. I do cook. I mean, yesterday I made food. Um. It was, I, I, dude, I can't remember the channel name, but essentially it was like, I, I had watched so many cooking shows because I like to watch cooking shows on YouTube. And everyone 
it like everyone would irritate me because like they they're not giving I need exact instructions. I need to know ex- precise exact instructions. And I know that, that's not my kind of cooking. Show. And I know that there are other people who have like that OCD or yeah. whatever you want to call it. And I was like there needs to be someone who like they have all the ingredients measured out beforehand and like oh, and yeah. put into a line on when it needs to be added and oh, like at what yeah. time and it was basically a cooking show for like people who need everything to be super clean and precise. Oh, that must have really annoyed you when we made those banana peels. Everything annoys me when we step into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> that is my place of stress. And what's funny is I think those are those are my favorite videos. Maybe, I know, maybe not I laugh, to so I edit, still laugh but... hard at them. Man. Yeah. I watch I watch the banana one. I'm laughing the whole fucking video. And then I asked my dad about it. I was like, what do you think of that banana one? He's like I didn't get it. <laughs> he didn't laugh at all. I'm like, did you ever see any of those videos of these people trying to turn banana peels into bacon? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, okay. I don't, I don't want to help you there. Buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm the first one. It's almost Ours is almost making fun of all these other ones. 100% it is. Because, I, I mean, I don't have any recipe. And what's funny, I, I, I knew coming into it that I should have looked up a recipe. <laughs> Obvious. I mean... But in my head, like I was literally like, getting on my phone and like looking up an actual recipe, and then I was like, "Wait a minute! I just smoked weed. <laughs> I should be looking up how to apex a, for I next a, season." A, and then another game went on, and then I, <laughs> no, uh, I thought it, I honestly I just thought it'd be funnier. I was just like, "Man, it would be it would be so much funnier if I just winged it, and then everybody's gonna comment on that fucking video. You need to do this. You need to. You do added that. way you too much soy to sauce. Yeah." I thought, but I haven't got any comments on it yet. Like, you need to do this. Or I, I, it kind of a, I made it funny. I thought, but it, it didn't. I haven't, I haven't seen. I like, was, I was hoping for people to be like, you fucking idiot. You need to fry that in oil. Because yeah, when I, when I went back through and I added, I added some TikTok videos in there to show how many people are doing these fucking bacon videos. I know. Um, and they. I was watching those videos, and they all had one thing in common. They were frying it in oil to make it super crispy and crunchy. And we put it on we straight pan, and we it. burnt the shit out of it. It was so gross. <laughs> Basically, we showed you how not to do it. Man. Yeah. Ours has got to be the worst out there. On do- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of things, and we I do. I enjoy that. Yeah, <laughs> I like the idea of one person trying it, but based on our video, oh, where they're like they they're following along with, so they added all the soy sauce, <laughs> and then it gets to the point where we dump some out. <laughs> like these fucking idiots. That part makes me laugh so hard, man. I was like, okay, we need to dump a little out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't dump all of it out. <laughs> Try okay. to measure. Okay, you follow along with the recipe, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was gold, man. I I really enjoyed that video, even though it was just kind of random. And and uh, I'm trying. I don't like. I said I'm trying to stay away from the cooking stuff, even though we're because we're called salty soup. And I I love. I, I mean. As much as I joke about being stressed out in there, and I am, but I'm always stressed out. I, those are my favorite videos when it, we're in the kitchen doing something. It's just been random for me, and it's kind of just been me seeing pe- other people's TikToks, and I'm like, oh, we can go, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely do that. <laughs> I can go find some of that fake egg shit, and we'll test that out. I'm curious. Right. But that those both that fake egg one that one made me laugh too, man. Dude, the fake egg one is so good. I love oh, that one, dude. I like the mud water one too. I like that one too, dude. I, I don't know. I Mud think... water and egg video. I think both of those did pretty well because people were curious about. Oh, the 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 mud water thumbnail makes it look like it's gonna be a a good review. It looks like a professional ad or something. Like it, yeah. it looks like <laughs> Mud water is trying to advertise to you on YouTube right now. But if you really look at the thumbnail, you'll notice that the background. <laughs> Is uh is caterpillars <laughs> is caterpillars that have been killed by the cordyceps mushroom <laughs> yeah. growing inside of them? Yeah, 
but it, from a for, for, unless you look close it yeah. looks like a, a very interesting <laughs> right. background like wow that's dynamic oh that's funny man and then the egg thumbnail is funny because i just found one of those blob fishes and i changed the color palette to yellow that worked great <laughs> I, I like that we're not putting our faces on like right. this every time I'm now saying, dude. I, I know we were like we were back and forth on that like oh we should take a bunch of pictures of our faces and just put them on and you're like dude i'm not doing that anymore and uh, i like i like that i like that it's and I mean, with the mud water one, my my idea really with that was I kind of wanted to drink that myself, and I figured maybe we could make it funny, and people are gonna click on that review that are just looking at to you know look up mud water, but we 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 slashed it so bad. I don't, <laughs> no, people sharing their stories about hallucinogenic mud water trips. Yeah. And I think we are the only one on YouTube that says it's like a bad review or something like that. Which I hoped it would have a lot more engagement, like maybe a bunch of more mud water enthusiasts like getting mad at us or something. But so far, it's just been people saying they have psychedelic trips and shit. <laughs> dude. I wasn't expecting that, but, that to come but out. But update of it. for everyone: Dalton is fully hooked on mud water. For real, man. I, I'm literally out of that first tin that we tasted on. I'm, and you have since ordered boxes. I have I have a supply now. Yeah, <laughs> I have a more, I have evening kits now. Morning kit. Dalton has mud water hooked, in preparation for the end of the world. I hooked you up with an extra frother now because oh, I got yeah. I had that an extra nice. one. That was pretty nice. Uh, I didn't need to, I guess. <laughs> you don't want to froth two things at once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, double frother. <laughs> that would have been. You like duct tape them together and just use them like that. You, it, actually, I take two of them together in one drink, and it just explodes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it explodes with one frother if you fill it. If you fill it any more than like a quarter of the way up, you have to froth first. I love, I love how childish it, I look in that video, <laughs> trying to freaking cook, and you're just like, God dang it! <laughs> I, okay, let me let me in there so I can show you how to do this. Right. I'm, yeah. I just make a mess everywhere with ev the bacon one too. I was making a mess, and that there's no reason why you should make a mess. <laughs> no, you're putting ingredients in a bag, <laughs> and I somehow <laughs> made a mess. <laughs> I'm glad that you realized it, dude. That's actually, I think, really helpful. That'll be like a key to growth. <laughs> he sees he's making a mess. Oh man. <clears throat> Yeah, I like the kitchen videos. They're fun. I have I have some notes in my phone that were like I always have notes in my phone, but for what we want to say in the podcast, and it's almost turning into like I was wondering if I should try to turn some of these into like a possible segment in the podcast. You know, like we joked about the Facebook the Facebook segment. one, and I also almost it feels like every other week I'm talking about stupid eBay customers too. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about this later. Maybe we'll have like weird little mini segments, or it could be maybe a possible Patreon thing in the future or something like that. But uh, interesting. Anyways, my stupid uh, eBay guy this week. He, like, the question was, "What's your lowest price out the door?" And I'm, I'm just like. The list price. <laughs> <laughs> the price that I have it listed at. What is that question, man? <laughs> Just because you put out the door at the very end of that sentence, uh, and I was like... Well, do you do free shipping or do they pay? I do free shipping. So it's the, it would be it's, the same answer. <laughs> literally, my only response to him I could think of was like, are you coming to my house to grab it? Like, do I have to drive this to you? Oh my. <laughs> what does this mean, like, out Dalton the door? Dalton is always combative with anyone <laughs> who asks him a question. <laughs> anyone who reaches out to Dalton on eBay expects a snarky remark like that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, it wasn't right away. He actually asked this three times, all right, because... First, I think he might have made an offer, and then I made a counter offer, and then he sends me like a message with like maybe another offer, like what, and then says, "What's your lowest price out the door?" Like he's trying to find like my lowest bid, maybe my, my counter offer the first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't, I don't know what he's getting at here. Like I told you what my bid was, 
are you coming? Are you coming to my house to pick this up or something? What's out the What's out, what out the door? I don't get it. I don't know. It was funny though. I sold a single Pokemon card this week for five hundred bucks. I had it listed for five forty. They offered four fifty, and then I was like, I just wanted to sell it, so I was like four ninety five, and they didn't even counter offer. Which I, I had sold one a couple weeks ago, the exact same card, for four sixty. Yeah. Yeah. For four sixty, so I would have gone much lower, but they just snatched it up. My my dad asked me this week when we were talking on the phone about the podcast and stuff, and he's like, "What does Cody do for a living?" And I was like, hey, "He sells Pokemon cards," and he's like, "Does he make money doing that?" <laughs> I was like, "Fuck, man, he's beating me in my eBay store a couple of weeks ago, man. God damn!" But you did a, good, a smart thing. You went and fucking graded a couple hundred cards, right? And have been just slowly selling them off. Yeah, yeah. I I I wish. I'm, I'm kicking myself in the ass that I didn't give you a handful of cards to go get graded now. Not that I would have sold a bunch of them. Right. But maybe, a, a, you know, one or two of them. But, I mean, I know. still have two giant stacks that aren't even listed because it's like kind of like these ones or maybe this one survived my childhood somehow. And The Pokemon trend definitely has, has ended or, you know, whatever the... F- definitely. The hype. <clears throat> the hype train is crashing hard i think you'll uh you see that across everything right so stocks are way down cryptos are way down all these things so hobbies have to go way down because people are now maybe a little worried about money in the future yeah i went to target yesterday and since covid you could not find pokemon cards unless you went to behind the counter and this time all the cards were back out not only that, they had like 50 Darkness Ablaze ETBs. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is a set that's been out for years. Yeah. And d- they're reprinting it. It's so weird that Darkness Ablaze got this big reprint. It didn't need the reprint because it's going to fall out of rotation in a few months. So for players, it's not even useful. Those cards aren't useful. For collectors, there was the Pikachu. Hmm. and that was kind of it that's not a great set to keep reprinting no um astral radiance is a new set that just came out today darkness of blaze didn't have a charizard in it it had a charizard v max but the uh the rainbow rare and what was, was there a full art version those got printed in different sets the rainbow rare got printed in um champion's path oh. and then the shiny version got printed in uh Shining Legends Fates? or Fates, yeah. Oh, okay. So it only had the Charizard VMAX, uh, which is crazy because a VMAX isn't a super rare card. Like that's that's a card that they need to be common because people play with the VMAX cards. It's not like a collector's card. It's like a five to ten dollar card, maybe. And I open, I've opened so many Darkness, I've never seen that fucking Charizard, and it's not a super rare card. I just haven't seen it. I thought it was rare. I mean, it's as rare as any other VMAX. Any other VMAX? Okay. Uh, wow. Today, though, Astro Radiance just came out, and that is a sick fucking set. I did see some of those booster packs there when I was at Target as well. Really? I did. When did you go to Target? Literally yesterday. They dropped them a day early? That must have been the whole Pokemon shipment was out already. Whoa. I should have told you about it. I thought Target. about taking pictures, of, but to saying that the fat, the the hype was over. I've heard Target loses a million dollars, not a million dollars, millions of dollars a year when they break um, street date like that. Really? Because the, it, it, I just it, especially it if you do it on a video game, I, I've heard with cards too, other games like that, but uh, it it fucks with. I, I guess it somehow fucks with the company's IP because they need it to release on this date. They've scheduled it to release on this date. And when people get the product early and they show it off to everyone who can't get it, uh, it creates like this weird spoiler situation. Yeah. And Damn, I should have got some packs and put it out there. <laughs> like, day early, motherfuckers. Yeah, for real. It, there was only booster packs. It wasn't any other... ET, you know, booster boxes or any of the new set. Yeah. <clears throat> it almost looked like they just had a handful of them and they were just kind of... That's cool. 
over on the side there. Um, the was something really interesting got posted on Reddit yesterday. They in Astro Radiance, there's this new rare called a Radiant Rare. Hmm. Okay. And in the next set, which is the Pokemon Go set, there's a Radiant Rare Blastoise. And these Radiant Rares must get printed on the same sheet and then cut and distributed into different packs. But one of the Blastoise from the future, future set got shoved into a Astro Radiance pack and someone pulled a, a, someone pulled a rare card from a different set Yeah, out of this new set. A new card that hasn't even come out yet, potentially, right? R- right. It doesn't come out until at the end of next month. Now, do you think Pokemon accidentally did that, or they're just doing that to create a little bit of hype here and there? I do think... Like fucking Willy Wonka in the fucking golden (laughs) tickets, man. Judging by how they cut cards and like how fucked cards are in packages, it was definitely a mistake. I suppose it could be. But why are they printing it out so early? It's a set that hasn't even come out yet. They're getting them ready already? Oh, yeah. They print them months ahead of time. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Wow. There's a bunch of spoilers for that Pokemon Go set at the end of the month. Have you seen the Dittos? Oh yeah, where you can take the sticker off and it's a it's a Ditto yeah. underneath. So you get a common card, and there's a little indicator. There's a little Dimbo uh, Dimbo Ditto symbol at the bottom, yeah. and that's that's your indication to peel off the face of the uh, a sticker and reveal that you've pulled a Ditto. That's right. That's kind of cool. I mean, except the fact that what do you do with the thing you peeled off now? You got this trash now. It says the guy who has a sticker on everything. I oh, I would put it on the wall. Right. I'm, I'm the only one that would end up recycling the stupid thing. But The problem is the ditto is so playable, so I, I need the dittos. So I will have to peel, or wow. I'll probably just buy them. Because I'd rather have like a, a set of unpeeled dittos and maybe get those graded or something because sure. those are interesting yeah and those cards are probably going to end up like getting worn out the fastest they're going to get fucked up because it's a sticker on top <laughs> you can't play with them unpeeled so you need to if you want to leave it unpeeled you have to put it in a binder or get it graded or something you can't play with it unpeeled you have to peel it right wow and the and you you would want to because the Badoof isn't playable and the Ditto is very playable. Really, the Ditto's uh, has an ability where it copies the attacks. It pretty much it does what a Ditto does. So you put it under the active and it can transform into a Pokemon that's in your discard. Hmm. So in that's very advantageous because in Pokemon games you can only run four of each card. So if you're building a deck around. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. Let's say you're building a deck around Greninja or something like that. You can only have four of those. But if you have four Dittos, now you can have eight, eight of them. Right. Cool. They didn't really make Ditto that cool in the video game. They kind of made him kind of <laughs> shitty. It's like, you can transform whatever you want, but it's going to be a shitty version. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And not going to be as good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <clears throat> I don't know. I still haven't ever gotten into the dang card game battling. My brother and I just would battle our own Pokemon against each other, and whoever had the most hit points won won the matches. Nice. That's how it went. It's a fun game. Yeah. I'm I'm getting back into it in a deep way. You can see I've got deck boxes out right now. I was wondering what all those those deck boxes were. Yeah, my brother just moved into town, and he plays, so... We're gonna find a. We found a card shop that we can play at now, and you don't. Um, you never. You don't know anything about like magic cards, do you? Like, if you like looked at a binder, could you like say all oh, these are? Oh, rares? I could not tell you what's valuable. Yeah. I, I've I've watched people play magic. I kind of understand. It's similar to Pokemon because the people who made magic made Pokemon. Yeah. Um, but I don't know anything about rarity. I mean, like, I, I know the Black Lotus, right? Everyone knows about oh, the Black Lotus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. There's a government auction going on in Denver. I was going to show you somebody's whole magic card collections on sale. That's interesting. I was going to show you. But show that might you. be fun to just throw a bit out there. I know. 
It's in three separate sections. It's in his binders, and then there's like two other boxes. Must be like commons and on, you know. And <clears throat> Interesting. I'd yeah, like to check that out. I'll show it to you after this, but. Well, let's I'm wrap always, this shit up. <laughs> I'm always on the. I've been hitting the Craigslist and the and the Gov deals and shit hard lately. Nice. Now I'm now that I'm starting to get ahead of uh, this giant shipment of stuff that I bought from my uncle. I'm. I'm all itching to like buy new stuff, you know, which is yeah. not, it's not good yet. I need to, I need to keep selling. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I think it's, that's, I'm, I'm like very addicted to the buying and like, oh, I can make, I could turn this into a hundred dollars, you Dude, know. I'm at the same disability where it's oh, like, man. I, this thing's coming out, and I know that there's a, it's going to be a limited supply, so I have to buy that so I can sell it later. Yeah, but man. it's also like, yeah, nah. but you have a, a bunch of shit that you need to sell right now. I know, I could, yeah, literally, it's it's like you you want to go thrifting right now. You could just go into your damn storage unit and have a thrifting fest. <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead, go down there and list some of that shit. I know it's. I, I it's I think I'm I like it more than like the damn casino man I get more of a rush out of it than right. hitting a freaking blackjack or something I don't know I I'm last summer I didn't do any yard garage selling at all because I was dealing with this whole uh, shipment so I'm kind of want to get back into the estate sales and the yard sales this summer again oh yeah we'll see I'll go with you to those for sure and I'm on the the hunt for the N64 stuff right now that's that's why I'm on Craigslist and the eBay bids right now. I'm trying to trying to get my old N64 game collection back up. Nice. I'm gonna play some of those old games just for nostalgia, I guess. And we should we we've been talking about this, but we need to we should film some gaming stuff too. The we, I got the old Atari. We'll mess around with and maybe I don't know do some vintage gaming. I mean, prepare to get your ass kicked, for sure. Mr. Apex, you don't know what it's like to play Pong. <laughs> you're gonna be looking do, for the, you're gonna do, be looking for the do, other do, buttons. Do, do, yeah. <laughs> How do I slide? <laughs> I honestly got pissed off when I tried playing Halo after playing so much Apex, because Halo was l a lot less things you could do with the character. There's no kneeling, no sliding, no. I don't know. There's like four things less that you could do, and it annoyed me because I kept clicking buttons, and the guy didn't do anything. And I was like, "This is pissing me off." This man. game's for children. I know. I was like, "What? Well, come on." Or cripples who have fewer fingers. <laughs> it Dalton just... thought that. I did not say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. We'll end it there. Everybody, see you later. Please like and subscribe, and for the love of share God, share and. Do something to help us out. <laughs> Get us out we're, of we're floundering here. We're in deep debt. <laughs> yeah. We're we keep putting money into this and it just it keeps going under and under into a deeper hole. It can have the money. It's a huge time suck though. We're we have no time and no money. <laughs> <laughs> if you could donate us both. That'd be pretty sick. We're going to start our uh, Kickstarter here very soon. For time. Yeah, please donate your time. All right. <laughs>